Paul Loeb. I write books on citizen involvement, uh, Soul of a Citizen and The Impossible Will Take a Little While are probably the ones that have gotten out the most widely. And I work a lot on getting ordinary citizens to be able to participate in larger public issues, recognizing that they affect them and recognizing that they have a voice and can have some power. I also founded a project called the Campus Election Engagement Project, which is a nonpartisan project that gets students involved in the election. We, we think of public involvement as voting, and it, it's critical when we have one of the lowest participation rates electorate, in the, certainly in the industrialized world, and pretty much all across the board. So one has to participate, and in, in that sense, there's a fairly linear relationship to at least achieving some short-term results. That is, your candidate gets 51% of the 50% plus one vote, they win. Straightforward. If you're trying to work for social change, it's rarely that linear. Um, it's shifting public attitudes, it's bringing issues onto the agenda, it's amassing power, it's pressuring sometimes elected officials, sometimes corporations, um, sometimes non-governmental bodies to be able to act in a certain way. And so it's, it's a much broader spectrum acti of activities, um, which again sometimes can, very, can certainly complement the electoral activity, but, but they're separate from it. And if we look at the citizen movements that, that have changed history, they, they have certain elements. I, I use the Rosa Parks story as an example because everybody thinks they know it. Sort of the quintessential social change story. A lady sat down out of nowhere on the bus and inst history instantly changed. Or she invented the civil rights movement, as one TV interviewer said. Reality is much more complicated, of course. She had been active for a dozen years with the NAACP in Montgomery, Alabama. She was the secretary of that local. You, didn't have the network news camera saying, Rosa Parks is making history, folks. She's making a phone call to get people to a meeting. But that's part of what makes history, those sort of humble, unappreciated actions that added together create a base of citizens who are connected and be able to have a common voice. Uh, so community is very important. There was actually a, one of the, the head of the NAACP local there was a guy named E.D. Nixon who got a young Martin Luther King involved. And we think of King as jumping into involvement. The reality is he was very hesitant, made all these excuses. Uh, he was new, he was young. They were all true, but nonetheless, um, they were excuses. And, and finally, he agreed to participate, and that was where the fir world first learned about both him and Rosa Parks. Another aspect, again, just taking the Rosa Parks story that I, I read about in Soul of a Citizen, is the idea of accidentally stumbling onto history. Her feet were tired, so she refused to move the back of the bus. In fact, she'd taken training sessions at a labor and civil rights center called Highlander School the summer before her arrest. So she was, it was a strategic action. She knew that she was launching a campaign. She didn't know how it was going to turn out. So I, I always say that when people act for change, it's, they need two things. They need a leap of faith. Uh, Jim Wallace of Sojourners says, hope is believing in spite of the evidence and then watching the evidence change. You need that leap of faith. You also need intentionality, which is just who we're going to gather together, who are our allies, who are the obstacles, how do we tell the story, those kinds of practical concerns. And the, the two can join. Uh, I look at the Arab Spring. It took a massive leap of faith to go into Tahrir Square in Egypt because you were up against Mubarak and you could, his police and soldiers could shoot you or torture you or jail you and all those things had been happening. Huge leap of faith. At the same time, it wasn't just a accidental action, oh, one day we managed to all find ourselves in the square and decide to stay. Uh, they had this very famed Facebook group that grew rapidly as a voice of common expression because they could participate without revealing who they were. Some of them strategized with the people who had overthrown uh, the dictator Milosevic in Serbia, who've done a lot of global training. So in other words, it wasn't, it was an intentional action. It wasn't accidental, and, and I'd argue that none of our historical actions are. And then the, the, the final action, going back to Parks, the final element is just that you have to persevere. You have to keep on. If she had given up in year three or five or ten, we would never have heard of her. And so it took a dozen years from Rosa Parks' first civil rights meeting to her stand on the bus, and then ten more years until the Civil Rights and Voting Rights Act are passed.
One of the dangers of Rosa Parks is people put her on the pedestal as this impossibly heroic saint, and you just think, boy, gee, she was great, but I could never be Rosa Parks. What I argue is that while maybe we couldn't envision ourselves at the stand on the bus, we certainly could envision ourselves going to a meeting of like-minded citizens, or maybe unlike-minded citizens, to talk about an issue that we cared about. And that had she not done that, and had not others not done that, there wouldn't have been that movement to respond to the stand on the bus. So it's sort of like the, the, the iceberg tip is the part we see, which is the stand on the bus. But everything below it is what makes it possible. And so the, the, that, I mean, maybe it, it might still be a courageous action in that time and context, even just to come to a meeting. But it's certainly a much more accessible action than imagining that you'll step onto a bus and instantly change history. And so I think most people end up, they use the far point of social commitment to say, I couldn't do that, therefore I'm not going to do anything, as opposed to say, well, some people are willing to do that, at least I can do something. I think it's very important to scale up these kind of dialogues. I mean, if it's just a sort of boutique, you know, happens occasionally on the margins, it's not going to have an impact. I think where it's significant is where it does bring people in, and, and part of the problem with our society is that people are very disconnected from each other. They're sitting there isolated behind the TV tube or whatever screen they're watching. And I would argue that being able to bring people out of their shells is, is really critical if we're going to have a healthy society. So I'd love to see this stuff scale up. Thank you.